media in the workroom. Tennessee has left its locker room and the volunteers will be here on stage in just a little bit. Um, some housekeeping announcements. Um, in the interview room, please silence uh, your cell phones. Reminder that there is no video of any kind, cell phone, TV camera, whatever, no video of any kind, no flash photography. Um, transcripts, of course, they will be distributed here at the arena, but um, you can get them online, ncaa.com slash transcripts, okay? And uh, again, don't forget, wait for microphone to come to you and please state name and affiliation, okay? And one more thing for the TV guys in the other room, um, the satellite coordinates are Galaxy 17 slot C. The data rate is 11.914 and the FEC is uh, five over six. Okay, we are ready to begin with the University of Tennessee. Uh, Coach Rick Barnes, student athletes with us are um, Grant Williams and Admiral Schofield. Coach, we'll call on you first for an opening statement. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you, and obviously we're happy with uh, the win and the fact that we felt coming in at Wright State would be as difficult a team that we played all year in terms of the way they move without the ball. They, they really a team that Watching them on tape, uh, you could tell they were just a terrific team. They understood each other. They've had one of those special years, uh, a lot like we have. And uh, so from that point, uh, defensively, we were, we were really pretty good today against a team that, uh, that's not a very easy team to guard. And um, offensively, once we settled in, you know, we, we settled in. We missed some easy ones early, but uh, we settled in and, and got our offense going. All right, Coach, thank you very much. Let's go to questions first for our student athletes, uh, Admiral and Grant. We'll come back for Coach Barnes at the end. Guys, first question will be on your right toward the front. Uh, Admiral or Grant, excuse me, Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Uh, Admiral or Grant, either one of you guys, just how important was it, do you think, to get one under your belt and, and, and kind of settle into being in the tournament? Admiral, you want to answer that? Please? It's always important because if you lose, you don't get to play again. But the biggest thing is, um, you know, we, we came out and did what we said we were going to do, you know, trying to run them out of your offense and, you know, against a great team, like like Coach Barnes said, very special team that can really shoot the ball and they're great with movement uh, away from the ball. And, you know, we guarded it pretty well. Um, but towards the end of the game, you know, we had spurts where we didn't we didn't do our jobs. We kind of let up on defense. So, you know, we got to tighten down in that aspect. But uh, we're going to get a day off and, you know, really recoup uh, our bodies and our, our minds and get ready for whoever the next opponent is. Okay, guys, we'll go toward the back here on this right side. Joe Rex over with the Tennessee, and for both of you, how difficult of a prep was this, you know, the way they move on offense, and why were you guys so successful on that end of the floor today? Grant, we'll let you go first. All right. Um, we've, we've prepared for an entire year for something like this. We've played teams that are similar – that play similar basketball as they do. So um, with basketball, it's a lot of constant motion, and you just have to understand these concepts. So really just going into film and – executing the sky report that the coaches lay out for us because they do an amazing job with it. So we trust them and we get on the court, we're well prepared and we just do our jobs. You want Admiral as well? Um, yeah, uh, like Grant said, our coaches do a great job of scheduling uh, teams that play different styles like this and uh, early in the year and our strength the schedule is important and you know, we get great, great teams like Lipscomb and you know, different other schools that run different schemes. So uh, we're usually prepared early in the year, but 
you know, this time of year, you got to be ready because, you know, any team could, could get hot, uh, especially in, in a tournament like this. Uh, every, everybody has a special year. Everyone, you know, is in, in good position at this time of year. So the biggest thing for us is, like Grant said, executing the scouting report to the T, uh, being able to go out and just compete at a high level and also give a good effort on the defense, which is our identity, and offensively just let things flow. Other questions for our student athletes? Okay, again, here on the right side, on the, toward the front. Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Grant, for you, I, I think 20 rebounds in, in the last two games in, in a pretty big stage. And I know your, your coach, it's a pretty favorite topic for him. What's kind of been the key to you improving in that area? Really, I've just been pursuing the ball more. Um, normally, I just try and box guys out and make sure um, to keep them off the glass and allow other guys to get it because it just – that's just how I used to do it. But um, recently, I've been more aggressive and being more pursuant of the ball and just putting the importance on that end because uh, on the other end, it all flows and comes to it comes easily. So um, you just got to put an emphasis on one thing and, and harp on it. Other questions? Okay, well, again, we'll follow up here on the front row. Bob Lewis again with VolQuest.com. Uh, he's not in here, but can you guys talk about Kyle and what he's turning into on defense, how much you guys played great defense today. How much is that a result of having a big guy in the middle that's playing like Kyle is now? Well, Kyle is a game changer. He's very athletic, and when he's when he's locked in and ready to go, you know he can really affect the game defensively and offensively. You know, getting us extra possessions on the glass and also protecting the rim. And when he does that, it makes us a lot better on both ends. And uh, you know, he's really our anchor. He's really our X factor. But you know, when when he's really locked in, he changes the game for us in a big way. Okay, we'll stay on the right. Uh, Grant, it looked like y'all were intentional about getting the ball to you uh, early to start the, the second half, uh, and then maybe some outside shots flowed out of that. I mean, is that was that something y'all talked about in the locker room, or just maybe how did that work? Not really. Um, we, we just run the offense, and we get good looks out of it. Uh, we didn't harp on getting me the ball or nothing like that because I don't really have to score the ball with this team. It's a team where we have a lot of guys put put the ball in the basket. So um, really, it was just coming out and executing what coach calls, and um, we did a good job with it. Um, we were moving the ball well, and it led to open looks. So um, it was important to just be aggressive and do what we do. Any other questions for Admiral or Grant? No? OK, guys, we'll let you return to the locker room for one-on-one -on -one interviews with your SID, Tom uh, Satkoviak. Okay. Congratulations on your victory, and we, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. You. Let's go to questions now for Coach Barnes. Coach, we'll go on your right, third row. Hey, Rick, uh, it looked like uh, you still had quite a bit of fire there on the bench, even with under eight minutes left. You know, you, you guys kind of had a comfortable lead. I mean. Uh, were, were there some things that, that you wished you all could have cleaned up a little more in the second half there? Yeah, I think this time of year you're looking for perfection, you know, and uh, I thought when we got the lead even in the first half, I, I didn't think we defended well in the last five minutes of the first half. I thought they looked up, and I think the score was 23 to 8, 21 to 8, something like that, and, and uh, I just felt like we let down a little bit defensively, and and you know this it's a game of momentum, but uh, – when they started pressing, they you know they went with five guards. You know, a big play, a big key too was you know, uh, love uh, landing love getting in foul trouble, and they they playing five guards a lot and just really going downhill hard with the ball, and we adjusted to that okay. But uh, I thought again with five guards at the end, you know they're going to trap and press, and we were a little bit sloppy, just uh, weren't on edge the way I want us to be, and uh, I just think it's a game of habits, and uh, I want them to play every possession like it matters. Okay, on coaches right up front. Uh, Rob Lewis with VolQuest.com. Coach, the, the first five minutes of the second half are you know, usually typically pretty important and up 11, anything could have happened. How, how happy were you with the way you guys opened that second half? Well, you know, uh, it, you know we've, we've tried to talk to these guys about a lot of different things with this tournament and I actually, one thing I forgot to tell them as coaches, we forgot to tell them was a longer halftime and uh, we, uh, we were back there longer than normal. And uh, but uh, we 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 you watched us all year. We've been really good at it, out at halftime. We've had ten points lead where we come out and let teams you know score four or five straight possessions, and we just keep talking about. And I told him I said, hey, we're not waiting one possession. You better be locked in from the very because we had the ball and uh, 
and so we better be locked in on the defensive end the first time we go down and uh, uh, and we and we were so that 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 gets us started I mean we're better when we're locked in on the defensive end and and uh, then obviously love love was in the game all we talked about was maybe at the end of shot clocks we're putting them in ball screens if we needed to do that but otherwise we were just going to execute our offense it's going coaches left in the middle uh, Kurt Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Uh, Rick, how would you describe your Tennessee basketball team? And is it not a team that can just out talent other clubs? Are you saying can we out talent clubs? Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, no. I, we, we've never we've never looked at that because I, I, one thing we've told our players, and we we said all the time, everybody can play. You know, we we. Uh, I mean, I was really impressed with our team tonight because we looked at this team and and they play hard. They do a lot of good things and. Uh, we probably have better players than people want to give us credit for, and uh, but I do know we've got. I, I do think hard work's a talent. I don't. I don't think that's a given. There's not everyone that works hard, and overall, we've got a, a group of guys that have embraced that talent of working hard, and uh, and they've. Uh, we've tried to create our, our own standard, our own identity in terms of how hard we think we can play on defense and we and uh, on offense when we stay together and execute. I mean, we missed some shots at the beginning of the game that we need to knock down, but that's part of the game. And and you expect some of that, especially in the opening game of this tournament. But uh, we settled in and um, we, uh, again, I, I think our players are probably a little bit better, certainly, than people thought at the beginning of the year. Okay, let's go in the back here on the right. Joe Rexford of the Tennessee. And what specifically, Rick, did you like defensively in the first half as you built that lead? Well, you know, we, we knew that they knew that we were a pressure team and we knew they would counter with back cuts. And they did a couple, but we had pretty good ball pressure that they, they weren't able to really get that pass. But they, they and they cut really hard. They, they do a good job of that. Our post defense, post defense was important. Uh, you know, with Love, he, he does such a great job of creating angles. And if you let him catch it with a foot in the lane, it's, a, it's hard to guard. Our ball pressure was good early. and. Uh, uh, but overall, and our helpline was there, and, and we rebounded. We thought we had to rebound, and we thought we could get to the offensive boards. Uh, someone had told me they had made a comment that they wanted to play a little, a little bit faster to try to keep us off the offensive boards, but we felt we could get there. And that was probably got us going as much as anything, what we were able to do on those second shots uh, during the, uh, the start of the game. But uh, uh, in our ball screen defense, because they're very good at uh, – coming down in transition uh, with drag screens. If you're not up there to touch, that they can shoot the ball. And, and we just did not want them coming off the ball screens looking to raise up and shoot threes. Okay, we'll stay in the back. Adam Grossbard, Dallas Morning News. Rick, this is a little off topic, but former Texas baseball coach, Aki Garrido, passed away yesterday. I was wondering if you have a comment on his passing. Sad day. Uh, just many just many fond memories of Augie. You know, I can remember uh, seasons would be going and when things weren't going well, he was uh, one of those guys like Yoda. You know, he always had a little something he could tell you. Uh, I remember we were playing and struggling a little bit and he came over and told a story about um, had won a national championship at Fullerton and next year he put so much pressure on his team and he said he was with his mom one day and she had a picture, and she said, you notice when your guys won the uh, championship, you're holding the trophy. Why don't you let the kids hold it? And uh, he said, I realized that day that it really is not about me. And, uh, and he told me, he said, the key to this, what you're doing is, can you get your guys to play like little boys that love the game? And, uh, but we had many, many, I love being around him. Sad day, I, I just hate it. Uh, when we, I heard the news the other day, and, uh, uh, but my time at Texas with he and Mac and the loss were, uh, there's so many memories and uh, we lost truly a, a, just a beautiful personality and a, his baseball record and all that. But uh, I, I loved him more as a man than I did as a baseball coach. Okay, we're out of time for uh, Coach Barnes. Uh, we'll let you go back to the locker room. Thank you uh, for coming and good luck tomorrow or two days from now. We'll see you tomorrow for the interviews. Wright State will be on stage in just a second.
Yes. Uh, what one? State University, uh, Coach Scott Nagy. Uh, his student athletes are Loudon Love and um, uh, Everett Winchester. Coach, we'll call on you first for an opening statement. Well, you know, I think that it's kind of the obvious you just can't play as poorly as we did offensively and win an NCAA game, not against a team like Tennessee. We talked about this, you know, that we were going to have to play great on both ends. Uh, and, and we've struggled offensively this year. We're not, we haven't been offensive team we, we've had some ups and downs we've been in some games like this where we played this poor offensively and won but you know when you're playing Tennessee that just isn't going to happen and um, you know pleased with the kids how hard they played we, we we got good shots we we did everything we needed to do and then it just put so much pressure on your defense I thought defensively we, we were really good now we didn't rebound the ball as well as we should have and, and when you miss as many shots as we did you're going to get beat on the glass but you know I've got nothing to complain about with how hard our players played. Okay, thank you, Coach. Let's go to questions for our student athletes, Everett and uh, Loudon. Guys, first one will be toward the left on the inside aisle. Yeah, Jay Morrison, Dayton Daily News. Um, Loudon, just sitting, you only 10 minutes in the first half. How, how frustrating was that sitting there? You, know, you, you waited all this time to play in a game like this and to, to have to watch it from the bench. Um, it's tough from a personal standpoint, um, not just because I'm sitting there because I can't contribute for the team for at least those 10 minutes. Um, and it, it really stopped me from going in the first half with those fouls. You got to be smarter. Uh, we knew that. We knew they were physical. You just can't make stupid fouls. Uh, but definitely difficult. Did you feel they were coming at you, or was that just kind of in the flow of the offense? Uh, I think it was in the flow. I mean, the first one was... Not ideal for me when I'm on my way forward. If he's catching posts at 15 feet, there's no reason to push him down. Uh, and I think it was just in the flow of the offense, not getting through screens and such. Other questions? OK, we'll let you go again. No, go ahead. You have the mic. I just say, Everett, uh, you, you were really the, the only offense that they had there in, in, the, in the first half. Uh, it looked like the stage wasn't too big for you. Would, just what did that feel like getting out there and, and attacking early on? Uh, for me, it was just, I mean, it felt good, of course, because if it wasn't for my teammates and my coaches believing in me, none of that would have happened. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just hard because I know we have some great offensive pieces and shots didn't fall for us. And, you know, I made some shots. So I just wish we all as a team would have made shots together. Other questions? Okay, let's go toward the back here on the right. We'll go back to the left in a bit. Uh, Joe Rexer with the Tennessee, and for both you guys, Tennessee defensively, did they do anything that gave you particular trouble today? Uh, Everett will let you take that first. Um, uh, Tennessee, they're they're really physical on defense. They uh, they're in the lanes, they uh, attack the ball, and they just pressure a lot. Uh, I think we had some pretty good looks out there. We just couldn't knock down the shots. Um, that's just how I feel. And um, Loudon. Um, yeah, like like I've said, they're definitely a physical group, but um, I found myself out of control and stuff due to own pace, you know, and it was tough getting gauged at the beginning of the game to what it was like, and them being physical like they are and athletic just made it more difficult. Let's swing back to the left. How unsettling was it for you guys to see Grant struggle like that? I know he, he kind of gives you guys a spark, and he just seemed couldn't buy a basket. Um, I mean, whether it was emotionally shooting the ball or whatever, he carried this team almost all year. I mean, both the seniors, him and Trey, even Trey on practice squad. So 
Um, it's hard to see him play his last college career game like that. Um, you know, you wish most of them would drop, but we know he was trying to make each one, so you can't blame him for anything. Um, my comment on that is, uh, although he wasn't hitting shots, uh, he was the first one out, the main one out there with a smile on his face still. I know he missed one, and he said, well, the next one has to fall with a smile on his face. Uh, he's a, a very important piece to this team. Without him, we wouldn't be here. So, I mean, it was hard, of course, seeing him miss shots, but he kept us motivated. Hey, let's move to your extreme right toward the front. Uh, yeah, Tom Archdeacon and Dayton. Uh, for both you guys, just uh, how would you kind of sum up your NCAA tournament experience? Loud. It was neat, uh, shorter than I would have liked. Um, I agree with Loud. It was, it was really a great experience, but of course we wish we could have advanced. Other questions for our two student athletes? No? Okay, um, Everett and uh, Loudon will let you go back to the locker room with your SID Bob Noss for one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews there. Uh, I want to say congratulations on a terrific season and thanks for being with us here in, in Dallas at the NCAA first round. Questions for Coach uh, Nagy. Coach here on uh, toward the left side. Hi, Coach. Uh, how tough was that? To, to, uh, you guys aren't deep anyhow to, to have Loudon on the bench with foul trouble that almost the whole first half. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it was more frustrating than anything. His th his third foul was was his fault, uh, just because he was standing straight up and <clears throat> and got screened. You know, he's obviously an important part of our offense, <clears throat> but I, uh, you know, I, I I don't think I don't think it impacted us that much. I, I you know, I, I think we go back and look at this. Two things. I mean, def Tennessee's been good defensively all year, and so it, it's to be expected a little bit and. We, we got some great shots. We, we flat out got great shots. And I'll tell you, particularly in the second half, we got great shots and just didn't make them. And, you know, it just, it, it, you're not going to be able to play with Tennessee if you, if you don't play well offensively. And we didn't. Uh, and two, honestly, the, the first two fouls Loudon got were not good fouls for him. Uh, you know, he just wasn't, you know, he wasn't, he, early in the game, he just wasn't in a good spot. Coach, let's go up front on here on the right. Scott, yeah, just uh, a little bit on Bensinger's struggles today, and also I, I think he banged himself up again diving on the floor, right? Yeah, I mean, you're just gonna you're, you're gonna have games like that. You are, and and uh, you know, Grant's had people sticking to him all year, uh, and so I don't I don't think that was any different for him. I mean, he's had he's had the the, the kind of defensive players that Tennessee has guarding him all year, and so I don't think. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm not knocking Tennessee. I'm just saying I don't necessarily think that that was the impact. Uh, you know, and Grant's had some tough offensive games. Uh, you know, and sometimes he takes some tough shots, but but we've asked him to do that because he can make tough shots and and he's put the time in and and so we live with it. Uh, you know, it just I, I don't know what else to tell you, Tom. Uh, you know, it was just he just had a tough game offensively. And, uh, you know, then when he dove on the floor there, uh, I mean, he's had a, a, a basically a hole in his hip. I mean, when I went down and looked at it, it's probably, it was probably two inches wide. Uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure they're going to have to stitch him up before we go home. Uh, but, you know, I mean, he's had a hole in his hip because he dives on the floor like that all the time. And he reopened it when he dove on the floor. Let's go back to the left. That kind of sum up his career. Two of fifteen, five minutes left, and a blowout, and he's he's diving on the floor. Yeah, I you know I, it wouldn't matter what the score is. That's the way he plays. That's the way he plays in practice. You know, I've I've said that several times. I've had to ask him to stop doing stuff like that in practice because we have to keep him healthy. Um, but you know, it isn't going to matter to him what the score is. And you know, he's been he has been the heartbeat of our team all year. The message in the locker room afterwards to you know kind of look at the broad picture as opposed yeah, to today. Yeah, you know, and it's hard. I mean, I, I've had to give that speech 23 times now uh, because I've ended every one of my seasons with a loss, and it's it's hard for the kids to hear it right there. It doesn't matter what you say uh, to try to make them feel better. They don't feel better at that point. I think you know as time goes on, they'll be able to look back and see what a special season this was. But you know, one thing I told them. 
I haven't enjoyed every coach or every team that I've coached. I wish I could say that I have, but I have really enjoyed these guys. This team has been a joy to coach. And, uh, you know, for as thin as we were and as young as we are, uh, have accomplished so much. And the key now is, is to make it a habit. To, to, and it's hard. It's hard for teams at our level to get back here. But, but you know, if you, if you can get in here and have players that have been to it two or three times, then these th kind of things change. Closing questions now for Coach here on the left. Lee, I, I know everything starts at 0-0 zero, zero next year, but, but what kind of carryover can there be for, a, for like, a freshman like Everett, the, the way he came out and attacked early? In that I mean, it, for everybody, the, the, the expectations for, for our whole team should – change in terms of how we prepare for next year and what they think. Uh, we primarily lose one guy that has played for us. And we're adding six, six good players. And so our depth is going to change a lot. It's going to be very competitive. But the guys that are coming back understand what it takes. They understand the culture that's needed. And they'll be able to teach the new guys. And so we're, we're obviously very excited about the future. Uh, just, you know, it's, it's hard to think about those things today. OK, Coach, thank you very much. And congrats on a great year.